Hello everyone, and welcome to Ruminations of Red Room. I'm your host, Kyle, with a K, and today we have back, returning, the co-host of Ruminations of Red Room, Ian, without an E. I sucked in my laugh uh, <laughs> during that introduction. You sucked it in, huh? I sucked it in. It almost came out. I didn't want to ruin you. Didn't want to ruin it. I mean, it is what it is. This uh, podcast is a garbage truck on fire just slowly rolling down a hill. But we we, uh, we, we managed to make it work. Roll with it. This is Ruminations of Red Room, which is a part of the Ruminations Radio Network. We are a horror-centric podcast, uh, the black sheep, if you will, of the uh, umbrella of podcasts on the Rumination of Red Room, but we embrace it. Um, today, we're going to be uh, talking about a horror movie, Don't Breathe, 2016. But first, uh, I heard that little glass or uh, can clanking around. Uh, what are you drinking, Ian? You know, I always made fun of these people. And it's a beer. Or is it? Or is you probably it? know what I'm going to say. It's a, it's a hard seltzer. It's a, oh, you're drinking the hard seltzer, huh? Yeah, I think I've converted. It's, I don't know. It's you're on that tasty. train. It's just too tasty. Okay, so I don't like White Claws, but I have a truly peach tea. It's the tea uh, versions of the Trulies. I'm not going to lie, man. I've actually been wanting to try the tea version. I've tried the lemonade one, and that was kind of meh. It kind of just tasted like a My Cards lemonade, which I'm not a too fan of because they're too sweet for me. But uh, the tea one I've actually been interested in. Is it any good? It is delicious. Delicious. Okay. Okay. So what's – so, Ian, you uh, you have not been on Ruminations of Red Room in a while. What's been going on in your world? Um – been I I've been watching a lot of a uh, lot of anime. I finished like two series. Two anime. What have you been watching? I watched uh, Mob Psycho 100, which is a perfect anime in my opinion. And I immediately bought the manga after, and I've been reading that. Um, I also watched Paranoia. Uh, what is it called? Agent. Paranoia Agent? Is that was called? I've heard of it, yeah. The same uh, person who did uh, uh, Paprika and uh, uh, per- uh, Perfect Blue. Uh, Paprika did Perfect Blue? I thought Paprika was the guy who did Tokyo Godfathers. And what am I thinking of? It's Tokyo Godfathers, uh, Millennium Actress, and Paprika, I thought. But I could be mistaken. He probably did all of them. Who knows? No. <laughs> who knows i don't apparently <laughs> there was only um, a way we could look this up yeah well i mean you know so uh don't breathe came out in 2016 uh 2016 was actually uh, a pretty decent year for horror movies man um just going down the list of a few that stood out to me uh the conjuring 2 the eyes of my mother which i'm a big fan of Ooh. um hush uh, Train to Busan. Oh, the, the whaling. whaling. Yeah. The Void. Southbound. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. like, th- there's a lot more. Like, the the list goes on and on. Um, so this year, 2016, uh, the highest grossing horror movies. Um, number one was actually The Conjuring Two. Um, it it made about 102 million domestically and about 320 million. Um worldwide roughly don't breathe was right behind it at 89 mil domestically and it made 157 mil worldwide so it was actually the second uh rated horror movie that year as far as uh, how much it grossed and uh the purge election year was number three (laughs) (laughs) was that the third one (laughs) i I don't even know anymore i lost count after the second one to be honest Uh, i think i like that one i don't know i actually don't know (laughs) (laughs) um so uh yeah it was a pretty good year um that year we're gonna look at a few of the awards that were given out we're not gonna look at the oscars and we're not gonna look at the emmys because you know why would we exactly we're gonna look at the fangoria chainsaw awards 
That's what yes. we're going to look at. <laughs> yes. yes. That's what we're going to look at. Now, this movie, Don't Breathe, was up for best film that year. Best film mm. for a horror movie that year. Yes. Mm. Now, here okay. was its competitor. Here was its competitors, okay? We had I mean, Green Room, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. Ouija, Origin of Evil. Ouija, Origin of Evil. That, that was, yeah. That's a good one, too. That's the, yeah. And The Witch. Ugh. It was and it, it was nominated for Best Film. Ian, who do you think took that award out of those? Uh, don't, I don't want to answer. You got to answer, man. I refuse. It's stupid. It's The Witch. It, it's The Witch. Uh, best Film in the horror genre that year, based on Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. Best Film in okay. the horror genre. In- now on instagram if you actually follow ruminations of red room we actually selected this movie based on um a post that i did where you could vote for what we were going to do next and uh don't breathe was put up against the invitation now the invitation also came out in 2016 and it was also nominated for an award during the fingoria chainsaw awards it was um nominated for best limited release film it didn't win it was up against The Eyes of My Mother. It was up against Hush, The Autopsy of Jane Doe, which won. And I Am Not a Serial Killer. But it, The Invitation did win an award. It won for Best Screenplay that year. So I was actually partial to this. I wanted to also do that movie, but it didn't win throughout the vote. So, um, But that did win Best Screenplay. Um, another one that uh, – another award that – it was nominated for was uh, best supporting actor, and that was for Stephen Lang in Don't Breathe, which is the blind man. Oh. He was he was up against a heavy hitter, man. He was up against Patrick Stewart for the Green Room, and he's oh. you know he's yeah. a legendary he's actor. Patrick Stewart. You know? I mean, he's Patrick fucking Stewart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but Stephen Lang took it. He won best supporting actor in for Don't Breathe. What? So oh, supporting actor. Gotcha, gotcha. Best best supporting actor. Yeah. So he actually uh, – so Don't Breathe actually walked away with one award that year, which is kind of cool. Wow. Um, yeah, not too bad. But uh, let's get into the logistics, people. Uh, this movie was released on August 26, 2016. It had a budget of $9,900,000. It made back, like I discussed earlier, or $89,217,875 domestically. And one hundred and fifty-seven million eight hundred and thirty thousand four hundred. Wait, one hundred and fifty-seven million. Excuse me, eight hundred, one hundred fifty-seven million, roughly. Okay, Just worldwide, roughly. <laughs> <laughs> like it just stops. Uh, it, it, it's gonna stop. And uh, it was putting it right behind the Conjuring two that year for the horror genre. Um, wow. How do you feel about that being? Uh, behind conjuring two as far as grossing you know i mean it makes sense it makes sense yeah um but looking at the movies of that year like Mm -hmm. my god is this the best year of horror it's pretty good dude there's some i didn't even list um there's a lot there's raw there's belko experiment the forest split Mm -hmm. split was really good actually yes i enjoyed that movie um terrible sequels yeah. like uh underworld blood wars and yeah. resident evil the final <laughs> chapter yeah and like you had some other sequels that aren't really uh, well liked in the horror genre as well like the blair witch kind of reboot that came out that year yeah. i enjoyed that movie but um a lot of people don't like uh me. like you um yeah. the boy came out that year i never saw that movie though Ooh, that's a, that's a low key that, that's a hidden gem I would say that's a hidden gem. gem. Yeah, it's not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. I'm sure we'll we'll cover that eventually. But as far as right now, let's give our our, our listeners a little sneak peek. The boy, add it to your collection or no? Yes. Oh. Um, oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Just just based on, it, it, I think it was just, I think people just thought it was going to be another doll movie, and I, it's it's more that's than that. What I thought, yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, more than that. Okay. Okay. So um, I will most likely p- 
butcher the writer's name on this movie, but this movie was directed by Fede Alvarez, and uh, he's also no, yeah, written. We'll we'll co-written, but um, he wrote and direct, uh, wrote and directed this movie. Um, he's also known for the 2013 Evil Dead remake. Uh, he wrote, co-wrote, and directed that movie as well. Heard it's pretty um, good. Yeah, and honestly, I, I gotta know. So, <laughs> I, I know you're a big fan of the Evil Dead remake. What is it about this director that you enjoy most? Like, what similarities do you see between both of these movies that you enjoy? Just the I know, absolute... I, I know that's a two-part question, but... Just so much tension that he, he builds into the character's uh not not even the characters it's just the story like you 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 care more about the story than the characters uh in both films for for me um but it just extreme tension and this it, it it i i i like this movie because it's not horror it's uh it's it's a thriller well it is a horror horror is uh, like you know but it's it's more it's it's very thrilling yeah, I yeah, it is. It's a uh, super high tension. It doesn't have a lot of gore, um, but it doesn't really need it. Like, it, yeah. like it's going for a completely different approach. Like, if you want something that's gory with his like his directing <laughs> style, watch Evil Dead. <laughs> God, <laughs> that is cringe. And cringe honestly, movie. I I don't know if going out of order would would be appropriate, but just wa- like doing. An episode on that movie back to back with this one would probably be interesting just to see the comparisons. Mm-hmm. But same um, actress, main actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, th- so we'll get to that. But I mean, the movie was written by um, Alvarez and also, if I butcher it, I'm sorry, but Rodo Sayegas. Um, it's probably wrong, but um, if you look it up, you'll see his uh, credits wrong. and IMDb and stuff. Yeah, it sounds wrong indeed. <laughs> Um, so, Roto co-wrote the screenplay with Hade for the Evil Dead remake. Um, now, what's interesting is uh, in 2016, after the release, they announced a sequel was in the works for this movie already. Uh, this was probably due to the high success and return the movie brought in, but producer Sam Raimi commented on the sequel and was quoted saying, it's only the greatest idea for a sequel I've ever heard. I'm not kidding. End quote. So that being said, uh, okay. okay, okay, okay. The roles are kind of flipping this time around, and um, Rodo is actually directing the sequel, and Hade is just helping co-write it. Oh, okay, yeah. So how do you think? Uh, how do you think that'll play in? I mean, I guess we have no context as far as w- what the other guy is. Uh, yeah, there's no like, trailers before, or anything, but yeah. yeah. But if Sam Raimi says it's good, I mean, he has be, some right? good taste. Other than like, I mean, you know, curl. But um, and I mean, he made Spider Man three, so he's got to be like, you know, he's got to be right. Well, he had it. a gun held to his head making that movie. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he did. I mean, <laughs> um, <laughs> this movie stars Stephen Lang as the blind man. Um, I think he's mostly known for Tombstone. Uh, the movie Tombstone. He's uh, he plays Ike Clanton. I haven't seen that movie in a long time, but he, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't. I totally forgot about Tombstone, but I know him from uh, Avatar. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, that's like his most like recent thing. I would say aside from this. Yeah. Um, Jane Levy uh, as Rocky. Uh, she's known for Mia in the Evil Dead remake, and uh, she plays a small appearance as Elizabeth, a character called Elizabeth in Twin Peaks: The Return, which is the season three Ooh. of Twin Peaks. So she's in that as well. Um, let's just jump right in, Ian. Now that we've kind of gone over all the, like you the don't specific, want to talk about the pretty boy. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that douchebag, right? Okay, but okay. Uh, let's just let's just let's just go into it. What do you think about this movie? Like, just dig in. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, like I said before, it's uh, it's just it's uh, it's a really good thriller. Um, at its at, at the at the sense of the word thrilling, um, it kind of keeps you in suspense. You are it, it, you're kind of sitting up in your seat with your nails half bitten off, 
Um, it's uh, it's got some really good tense moments, um, and yeah, it's uh, it is it is a well made film. I enjoy this movie. <clears throat> it kind of caught me by surprise because when it first came out, I didn't know the director, um, or I wasn't like really in, like as far as following that guy or the Evil Dead and stuff like that. But uh, uh, I thought this. I think this movie's awesome. Um, I think it has a lot of good qualities. I like his directing style a lot. I don't know who does the lighting in this movie, but I love the lighting and the background, like like the ambiance and shit mm-hmm. in this movie. It looks awesome especially the, the night scenes before they go into the house and the yeah. way the houses are lit up and the way like the end of the streets lit up with the fog and it's just so eerie and it sets such a cool tone and it kind of creates like this universe that's like they do a lot of background storytelling in this and it's like if you really pay attention to it and it's really cool um i uh i would recommend this to people that probably don't even watch horror movies too. If like you're just in a suspense or just wanting to watch a good movie, I think this movie can appeal to like people outside of the horror genre, um, which I think makes this a lot more universal than something like Evil Dead. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's a great film, and uh, I honestly don't think the writing's that that good. Um, I don't think there's anything like standout-ish to the writing it's pretty it's pretty basic and uh, straightforward the premise is um it's a cool premise it's simple to follow and understand but it's nothing to like write home about no pun intended uh it's uh it's a good movie though and uh i'd recommend it um we can go over a few scenes. I mean, we'll set the groundwork as far as like just the movie itself. It just stars these three, uh, these three kids. Um, I say kids, they're in their twenties. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you got Rocky, you got Alex and money. Hold on. Hold uh, on, hold on. Before yeah. we, we get to the stars, right? Sure, sure, I, sure. I had a vision in mind. No like pun intended. Sudden- a <laughs> yeah. It's gonna make it. It's gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so as I was watching this movie, and I was seeing Stephen Lang doing his thing, I couldn't help but to think, you know, just another actor that could have played this part that I would have liked to seen play this part, and it would have been canon, and I would have loved it to be canon with his other movie, but. You know how you know? Okay, I'm just gonna get to the to the to, to the meat and chowder. As no, 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 ease it if you have to. Come on, I'm going for this ride. You got me intrigued. You take as long as long as you need to you, get to this point. Go ahead. You know how they made Old Man Logan, right? Yeah. His final send off. An actor, you know. Just. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, but. Uh, he had a really you good want this to tie into the MCU. No, 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 hold on. Partially, but he had a really good send off, and I would, I would have just loved to seen, you know, Ben Affleck make his, no. make his <laughs> <laughs> just make his revision as the blind man. AK straight out of Hell's Kitchen, moved to Detroit <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta know. I would have loved. To, I would have loved to see seen a run down Daredevil. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll just say it. Sure, Daredevil. He was practically Daredevil. Sure. Now, does the same story apply? So we got Matt Murdock's daughter that was run <laughs> over by a car, <laughs> oh, and now. Matt Murdock goes out and kidnaps this other woman to inseminate her. Are we keeping the same story? I mean, is Matt Murdock really a a, a, a superhero? Is he a hero? Because he seems me- more to me like a vigilante, you know? Like Stephen Lang is the uh, blind man, right? Like Stephen Lang. Is. So, I mean, I got a, I got a couple questions. But, uh... Shoot. He he actually you know he does the smell in this the heightened sense smell he has the heightened sense hearing I mean he's got all the qualities 
Mm-hmm. He's got all the qualities. He has a cane in the beginning, just yeah. like, you know, Matt Murdock. And just like Ben Affleck. Everyone. Just like Ben Affleck. Um, when does Wolverine come into play? Because I thought you were going a different direction. I thought this was going to be an Old Man Logan sequel where Wolverine goes, and now he has his claws and just tears these kids apart. That's what I thought you were going with. No, but I like the no, no, I like no, the no. Matt Murdock more. Yeah. No, no, no. This is, this is, this is canon. It's a canon, canon. sequel. Canon. to yeah. the 2003 uh, mm. movie Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, with Sam Brady producing it, I mean, Spider-Man movies, it makes sense. Came out around sense. the same time as Spider-Man movies, so, I mean... That's true. Now I'm kind of... You know, I might actually rank this movie lower now that it's not a Matt Murdock daredevil sequel that's what went into my ranking yeah you've kind of ruined it for me i'm not gonna lie (laughs) you're welcome yeah thank you um so what do you think about the cast of characters uh we got some (laughs) (laughs) we got some uh three shitty kids um yeah we got the girl you know who has the rundown shitty mom uh limbs like lives in the projects trying to get out, trying to take care of uh, her sister. Uh, we got Money, which is just a piece of shit. He's a gangster. He runs, you <laughs> He's know. just a piece of shit. <laughs> he's, he's, That's the character okay. description. <laughs> <laughs> just be a piece right. of shit. Just all right, all right. <laughs> let's back up. That, let's back up. He's, you know, he's trying to do what he can and, and There's no stay up. He's just a and, piece and of stay, shit. I'm making one. He's trying to stay up in Detroit. You know, he's trying to... He's trying to get by the only way he knows how, and that's to rob. Now, <laughs> we also got the other kid, uh, Alex, which I think is the bitch of the movie, in my opinion. He is the biggest bitch of the movie. But okay, so why do you, you so gotta why feel do you bad for the guy? I mean, he yes, an absolute beating, beating as a bitch should, yeah, but emotionally and physically like it's too much it's too much so um yeah man i don't know these characters weren't very likable to me i didn't even like the main girl to be honest um no i didn't i didn't like any of them yeah like they were all very unlikable um i mean that's what makes this movie kind of interesting because i'm not really rooting for anybody to succeed who's the bad guy it, well, yeah. Who's about yeah. Go. Answer me. I got you. Uh, <laughs> the, the turkey baster with the semen in it is probably the bad guy. I, I agree. Um, I agree. Those little, those little children in that turkey baster are the, they're are the, the villains. They're the real villain of this yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, that's what made this movie in some ways – like, I don't know. Like, I, I like to root for something in a movie, and it's hard watching something that uh, – you really just don't care what happens to any of the characters. I kind of wish that uh, at least one of them would have been likable t- to the point where I was rooting for those people because they get put into a situation where like it, like it's pretty fucked up and it's kind of like what you said um, as far as Alex. Like he gets put in situation after situation where he's just getting his ass kicked, <laughs> and the, there's never like a moment where like. They finally hit him or finally knock him out. And you're like, yeah, fuck yeah. He deserved that shit. Yeah. You're kind of just like passively watching it. Yes. 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 Couldn't have said it better. Uh, but that's kind of like I, – I guess it's not like a a downside necessarily. It just – it doesn't it, – it doesn't help it as far as my rating goes. Um, like, what do you think about the characters? Um, all of them. They're just all, I, but to be honest, I think Stephen Lang's character is probably the most non-villainous in, in the movie, which is saying something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, God, money. He's just a thug, like. Obviously, that's that's what he's just a piece of shit. That's a written in his a uh, character sheet. Um, Dylan, he is just 
just a little bitch. Just a little. Oh, you bitch. mean Alex? Al- Alex. Alex. Yeah, yeah, the actor's name is Dylan. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Alex, just take a hint, bro. Take a hint. She is manipulating the fuck out of him throughout the yes. entire movie. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's kind of played like he kind of plays the bitch role the whole movie, and like it's almost like he knows it, and like he has these like moments where you think he's gonna redeem it, but mm-hmm. doesn't. I mean, it starts off with him, you know, breaking into his dad's office to get the keys to you know rob these houses. So he's already like he's not a good guy. He's a piece of shit. Yep. He's a piece a piece of shit hanging out with piece of shits. So. Like uh, again, right off the bat, he's he's meant to like take the role as like this uh like the innocent you know guy who falls for the girl, but in reality, he's just another one of them. How is he friends with them though? It, it's just so weird. He feels so out of place to me. Yeah, he does feel very out of place. I mean, the only thing I could think of, which they don't give any kind of backstory about this, but like maybe school or something like that, right? Like you got to imagine like. Sure high school or something but he even he looks i mean he looks younger than than rocky yeah but he's he has that face yeah yeah he does have that that younger face um so i don't know uh nothing i just couldn't get behind any of the characters which i i just don't know how i feel about that i like movies where i could at least root for one and i didn't get that but um do you have any like favorite scenes in the movie I have a ton of favorite scenes, actually. Okay, let's hear them. Oh, okay, let's hear them. Uh, first off, uh, I love, love a good, um, what's it called? Um, when the character or characters, uh, what's it called? Ah, when they enter like a, the, the, uh, the tunnel of no return, kind of. Oh, like the point of no return? Point of no return. I love, I love uh, different. I love seeing different shots of that in, in movies. And the shot of that was uh, fantastic. It was them in between uh, two houses in the foreground, and then uh, Stephen Lang's house in the background. And they were just walking up to his house, and it, it looked, it looked great. Yeah, it did. I know exactly what you're talking about, and like that goes to back to what I'm saying with the lighting and stuff, and the way it yes. looked. It like it sets the tone, man. It sets mm-hmm. the tone. I I agree with you 100. Um, one of my favorite scenes. I don't know if you caught it, but there's a scene with a one shot, and I love it to death. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, I already know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, know what you're gonna it's say. it's right when they get into the house, and like it immediately just starts the one shot, and it's going from room to room and it's not breaking it and it's just like following them over the shoulder and then switching perspectives from character to character but while following each one of them into a new room it's like it's showing you the whole layout of the house as you're going around like it's like showing you the dungeon before they have to conquer it yeah. kind of thing you're like here we go this is this is what they're up against this is like the like the house is the villain now at this point almost and uh the way that one shot is filmed is really cool i really enjoyed it um it was great I loved it as well. You got any others? Um, yeah. I mean, the uh, the uh, scene where Lang has uh, his GP100 uh, 357 mag uh, revolver. And, <laughs> and he's pointing it at, uh, at uh, Rocky and Alex. Um, and the phone goes off and he finally shoots. But that tension before that, I totally forgot like what was gonna happen in that scene. I was just in awe. I was like, "Oh fuck, no! What, what's gonna happen?" <laughs> yeah, man, he does. Move? He does a lot of cool moments like that. Like, I love how he kind of like defies your expectations of like security by like thinking like they're like oh we have a plan so we're gonna go to the basement now and like as they're walking to the door he just bursts through like yeah. he's constantly oh. just, he's constantly just like interrupting the scene that you would think is like safe like mm-hmm. the, there's never a safe moment in it for me it felt like that way because you're just like it almost felt like a video game like right when you think you've lost the guy like he just shows up like the like the enemy just shows up and like they do it really 
really well and like really spontaneous in a way that I like for me anyway, I didn't expect. And um, I really like the whole, uh, like just jumping into something else. Uh, I really like the scene when they're in the basement and he shuts the lights off oh. and there's there's a part where she's where Rocky's kind of feeling the shelves and going through and he kind of just stands there in the darkness and you could see him stand there and she's slowly going towards him and he's just waiting like he's just standing there waiting to hear something or to feel something and she's right about to touch him and then Alex makes like uh I think Alex calls out for Rocky and then it, it draws his attention, but he, she was like inches away from touching him and just like his like composure that he was keeping and everything um, was just really like, it was like so scary and intimidating. It was really cool. That was another um, really great moment of the thrilling. Just to just, to just yeah. Yeah. Great moment. You got any others? Um, let's see. Fuck, I forgot to, there was that one. Um, also just when they were, when he shut the lights off, that was a really good idea. Uh, kind of oh, yeah. just getting them in, into his zone, into his playing field. Um, they actually used, um, cause I, I was curious about this. They used, um, uh, contact lenses to, to make it look like their pupils were more dilated than they were, um. Cause they look huge, yeah. Um, but that was that was really uh that was a really great idea of this movie, and this movie has really great ideas. Um, yeah, I, it it just has really great ideas, but I feel like the delivery could have been could have been better. I don't know. I don't know. It just feels a little off. We've watched we've watched a few home invasion movies now, and this is like the opposite of a home invasion, where like the home invaders are getting hunted. Yeah. which is uh it's you know it's interesting um i liked how he kind of like he was expecting for this to happen eventually right like he was expecting for someone to come across looking for probably cindy i think her name's cindy the girl in like in the basement so hmm. i guess we'll tackle that subject what did you think about the plot twist and the whole thing about his daughter being killed and the whole Cindy thing and keeping her down there and, you know, the whole insemination thing. Like, what do you think about the twist? Is it bad to say that I understand it? <laughs> <laughs> like, I understand. There's, like, it's wrong, obviously, right? We sure. can all agree that it's wrong. What he did was wrong. It's wrong. Sure. But I, I understood his logic. <laughs> Of saying, hey, you ran over and killed my daughter, so I'm gonna need another one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> took a life you, you took a life from me, so you're gonna you know, you're gonna give me another life in return. Either an eye for an eye or you give me eye for an eye. Oh, another I'm, fun. I'm very uh for an eye for an eye. I love an eye for an eye. That's that it should be you know, that should it should be implemented in everyday life um, so you're a very vengeful person and you yeah. you don't forgive people very easily is that what you're saying um i mean it, it just depends on what they did if you so cut off my finger obviously <laughs> i'm gonna be a, little, be a little salty about it and i'm gonna want your finger how do you think he got cindy back to his house that's a really good question and i've been thinking about that and i have no idea no idea I'm I'm kind of bummed that they never go into that. Like, this movie kind of, like, happens so fast. It doesn't explore any background, backstory. And, mm -hmm. like, look, a movie doesn't have to. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like this movie could have been – I think this this is a movie that could have actually benefited from being flushed out a little bit. Like, yeah. it, it, like if this movie would have – because it's only, like, an, an hour and 30 minutes. I feel like this movie could have been a good – 15 20 minutes longer 15 minutes longer and just had like a little bit more backstory or a little bit more interactions with other characters other than the four i mean it sorry go ahead oh i wasn't gonna say oh, okay i was gonna say uh it could be because the budget 
or it could have just been because that's the vision he had. But what do you think about that? Like, do you think this movie could have been a little better if it would have explored maybe like how they all knew each other or how the girl got there or how, you know, uh, maybe Alex's uh, relationship with his father and like the security, you know, yeah. stuff. And like, do you think it could have helped this movie or do you think it's fine the way it is? You know, there's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, and seeing enough movies, you kind of want them answered. But for the general public, obviously, it they didn't need that because it grossed how much? Like over $150 million. Mm-hmm. Um, So obviously, it didn't need it. Um, and it's getting a sequel. Uh, so maybe that they'll they're gonna explore that in the sequel. So, so let's let's talk about that. So, um, the so in November 2018, the script was said to be completed uh, for the sequel, but the movie was postponed due to the COVID 19 pandemic. Um, on October 8th, 2020, Lang revealed that the film had finished filming, so they're done at this point apparently. And the film is scheduled to be released on August 13th, 2021. So this year, um, just as you know, some speculation, what do you think they could do with a sequel? What would you want them to do with a sequel? I mean, an easy cop out for a sequel could just be <laughs> someone else, uh, uh, gets into his house again, or it's him finding another person to birth another child for him. Um, but I, I genuinely do not know. I feel I like I really it hope they don't go that route. Like I, like, like I feel like the way the first movie ended with like her walking away in the sunlight to California and then like her seeing the, uh, like, you know, the news broadcast saying that he was alive. Like, I feel like it would have to almost include those two again, but at the same time, like, what would that entail? So, like, I I can't picture him flying out to California to hunt him down. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like, could they do that? Could it be, like, a hunt movie where he's literally – like, can they expand it from being in a small, concentrated film set, like a house, to being, like, a citywide, like, hunt, like a manhunt? Maybe he gets LASIK. I don't fucking know. That was a bad Lasik. joke. I, I know what you're Mitch, saying. Mitch, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mitch, actually, just input your voice saying what the real word is. That, that'd be even better. <laughs> and dump it over his voice. That'd be perfect. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm interested. I'm curious to see where this goes. This movie was originally going to be called um, A Man in the Dark, and I felt like that could have been a better uh, title. To be honest, a man in the dark, really? Yeah. Uh, nah, 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 it's too like on the nose. A blind man. I feel like people. don't breathe. Eh, I don't know. It's always been a weird title for me. It's always it, it's it's always I don't know. I don't know. I I never liked the title. To be honest, I didn't mind it. I mean, it makes sense with the you know <laughs> heightened sense of hearing and shit, and like also just don't breathe as far as like the tension that it builds and like, you know, panicking and breathing and shit. I don't know. I, I never minded it. I, it, it's fine. It's a title. Yeah. I, I, I don't really care about the title too much, but, um, are we just going to skip over that, uh, Turkey baster? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. I mean, <laughs> let's talk about the Turkey, the real villain of the movie. The real I mean, villain. I asked you what you thought of the twist, but you didn't really go too much into it. Yeah. What a weird, what a weird twist. What a what a twist that was. So you go into it. <clears throat> I you, you, you're kind of on the fence about the uh, the main characters, and you kind of sympathize for Lang's character. And then, but I'm but I, I as he was hunting them, I still kind of felt like Lang was the bad guy for some reason. Um, yeah, they're, they're like all the bad guy. It's weird. Yeah, I. And then, and then that came out that the, he uh, he had a woman in in his basement that he would uh, he uh, that had his child, and then he captured Rocky again. There's a lot of uh, catch and a release in this movie, and it was yeah. uh, it's a 
hell of a roller coaster. Also, Alex getting just destroyed. I felt bad for him at the end. Cause But I also Okay, so there there is the one scene where he fell on the uh, the window. And it is the stupidest thing that I could have thought of to turn your back to the glass and tr- what was he going to try to do? What was he going to try to do, Kyle? You yeah, tell me know. what he was going to try to do. I mean, it was a cool little scene where he like, you know, he, he, Lang pops out of the window and shoots the glass and stuff. That was cool or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I feel like that a lot of this movie, like you said, it was just catch release and – I don't know. I do you think any of this could have been avoided? Like, do you think? I don't know. There's something I like, like you said. There's something about three the movie. words, just three words, and this whole thing could have been avoided. You, you know what? Three words. I'm gonna say, Kyle. Don't rob him. Get a job, you fucking <laughs> bums. <laughs> you want to move to Cali? Go ahead. Get a job. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. Robin isn't wrong. a job. I mean, it depends who you're you asking. Want a better life? Get a job. Even if you work full time at McDonald's, you can still, especially if you live in Detroit, you could you could get your own place. There's plenty of McDonald's that are hiring in Detroit. I guarantee you. <laughs> um, but a California know. dream, like, come on. Come on, that's your. Yeah, I feel like that's so played out too. The whole California dream thing is so yeah. played out. Let's start somewhere a little more practical. Let's uh, bring it down to reality. Think of like somewhere a little safer, a little safer than uh, Detroit, like Des Moines. You know, maybe that's that's not halfway across the country. Yeah, <laughs> you know, D- Des Moines, maybe. Iowa. That's the first thing I thought of. Uh, they can, they can move there. It's gonna be a little cold, but they're they're from Michigan. They're used to it. Get a full time job at Mickey D's. Uh, just assuming, <laughs> just assuming that that's all that they could get. Sure. Um, being robbers and all. Um, and then you know she could she could take her her sister, get an apartment. But I want to go surfing. It would be a better life. It would be a better life. But I want to surf. Yeah. Move to Florida. It's closer than California. There you go. <laughs> Cost less money, you're good. Yuck. I don't know. Get a job. Uh, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, don't breathe. Don't breathe, 2016. Um, I guess we'll go into the Red Room rating. What did you think? What's the rating? It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be weird because there's only going to be two factors involved now. So um, let's hear it. Let's hear your final thoughts and your rating. Yeah, final thoughts. Um, I think the biggest flaw for this movie is um, is the lack of story for for me, for me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, lack of story, lack of um, likable characters, lack of backstory. Sorry, um, lack of likable characters. Um. And it just felt like it was missing some. It just felt like it was missing some scenes. It genuinely just felt like it was missing some scenes. I know in the Evil Dead, uh, you have to watch the uh, the uh, director's cut because um, the, the theoretical cut is uh, is a lot shorter, um, and it just it just makes more sense with the director's cut. And I felt like this could have benefited from that. Um, but that being said, great shots, um, great moments, great ideas, um, just a great idea for a movie for, to have a blind, to, to just just the whole thing, just the whole thing and not go too overboard with the uh, blind thing. Although it was a little inconsistent at some times. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just gonna say we're in, um, 74. I feel like, oh. yeah, um, I did buy this movie, uh, immediately after watching, um, but it just, the more I think about it, uh, the, the more I forget about this movie, to be honest, um, but 74, it's, it's, it's a decent movie, very decent movie, 
And it's a decent watch, and I, I would recommend this, and I would show this to people. I think it's very rewatchable as well. Okay. I Yeah, uh, I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is that, like you said it like it's missing something it's missing scenes it's missing and and people are gonna be like oh what you need everything and you know hit over the head on you you need everything you want us to hold your hand while we explain no that's not what i mean there's plenty of movies games and stuff like that that i enjoy that leave little context and you know leave a lot of room for your just imagination to run wild but i don't feel like in this movie your imagination running wild is necessary like i i feel like this movie could have maybe been a little better with some more context, with some maybe some more scenes of him, you know, kidnapping Cindy and bringing her back to the house or showing more context of how they knew each other or just making the audience give a shit about what's going on and who these characters are. Um, I, I think the cinematography and stuff is excellent. I think he's awesome at directing. Um, I don't think there was any flaws in that. Um I think that, you know, the the production value with the budget they had is is it's a well-made movie and I think a lot of the problems are just in the writing. I really think that's all it is. It has nothing to do with the directing, which I think, you know, serves better in the Evil with or the Evil Dead because, you know, you don't need crazy writing to to make a like a movie about what that, you know, is. Like his directing style was perfect for that and I feel like that um him branching into something like this is it still looks good and um it's directed well it just it doesn't it doesn't i i don't really care about what's going on with the characters i just care about the situation by situation basis i guess um i did buy the movie as well i do enjoy this movie i think uh there's a lot of good qualities about it um um and and i think it it is a good movie to appeal to people that aren't into like hardcore horror movies that can, you know, sit on the edge of their seat and be, you know, uh, just excited about what's happening and, you know, wanting to know what's going to happen next and being on the edge of their seat kind of thing. I think that that does, that's done really well in this movie. Um, but it's funny and, I had this rating planned out since this morning, and I'm giving it a 74%. Oh. <laughs> so this is one time we've actually agreed on the same exact score. So that being the average, is it's going to be 74%. It's is the uh, Red Room rating for this. It's a thriller, and it's got yeah. the tension, but it's missing the mystery. It, it's It's just missing. It's just missing stuff. That's yeah. that's really what it comes down to. It's got great tension. It's got great scenes. Uh, it's got some fucked up shit going for it. I actually didn't really. I I thought the uh, insemination stuff is as understandable as that twist can be. Um, the eye for an eye thing and all that. I just thought it was it, to say it's out of left field might be an exaggeration, but I just I wasn't very impressed by it. But um, yeah, seventy four percent. I'm glad wow. to have it in my collection. <laughs> Uh, and it's, you know, a 74 is a solid rating, honestly. Yeah. I can't believe we had, had the same rating to the T that's pretty nuts to the T. Yeah. Um, so again, uh, we are a part of the rumination radio network, so please check out the website. There's a bunch of other casts, um, that are under that umbrella that you can listen to about all kinds of things. Um, Definitely go check us out there. Uh, you could follow us on Ruminations of Red Room on Instagram, where we do um, a bunch of posts about what we're going to be doing next, as well as um, uh, trying to get some feedback on what we're doing right and wrong on our casts, uh, what you want to hear from, what you want us to you know review, things like that. And uh, we also have a Twitter, Ruminations of Red Room, uh, on Twitter as well. So you could follow us there. Ian, do you have any final parting words for the folks? Uh, see you next time. Also, have a good day. And guys, I have two things for you. Um, number one, get a fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, stay spooky, folks.